page 162 in your hymn books. Storinka sto šist dva i sto šist tre. Krasna plečina Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory be to Slava Jesus Christ. I welcome everyone here today to the celebration of this very special divine liturgy for Holy Thursday morning. This divine liturgy is called the Liturgy of St. Basil the Great, and that includes longer prayers, especially for the anaphora that is during the central the middle of the Divine Liturgy. The Gospel reading for this liturgy is also quite lengthy and it is taken from the text of three of the evangelists. At the end of the liturgy we will have the rite of the washing of feet as accounted by the Gospel according to Saint John. And this will be led by Bishop Andre. You have received, I think, texts, the white booklets are the texts for the Divine Liturgy, and the purple booklets are for the rite of the washing of the feet at the end of the liturgy. During this Divine Liturgy, I will also bless the Holy Chrism, which is used primarily for the Sacrament of Confirmation. This blessing takes place at the end of the anaphora, just after the consecration of the bread and wine. With the complexity of today's liturgy and the deeply spiritual content of the prayers and scripture reading, there will be no homily. I wish to thank the Sister Servants of Mary Immaculate, who will be leading us in singing the responses for today's liturgy, and we invite all of you to join with them in singing. Thank you as well to Father Volodymyr Boschutsky and the parishioners of Holy Family Parish for hosting us today during this year as they celebrate the 90th anniversary of this Holy Family Parish. And now, let us immerse ourselves spiritually into this very important time of prayer.
Sari Rebes, Neuti, Shetele Duši, Istene, Šelšuri, Vse, Sano Povnjaješ, Skardi, Bržeti, Abodatelju, Prejdeju se lež od nas, I uče se nas, Vidi vsako izperne, I spase blaje duši naši. Slavo večne Bohu, Nazomne mir, Ljudja blahovelinja, Slavo večne Bohu, Nazomne mir, Ljudja blahovelinja, Osvr, Hubo moj, Vi krejiš, Ustamo iz povića, Odut moju. Blahosloveni Bog, naš zaučeneni pošak časne vike vični, nekaj gospod napravit stope tvoji, nekaj pomene tebe gospod Bogu carce svojemu, zaučeneni pošak čast i na vike vični. Blahosloveno car svoho tja i sena i sodo duha, nini pošak čas i na vike vični. I v meri ospode vi pomolim še, za mer z vesodi spasinja duz naše ospode vi pomolim še, Za mir, še o švitu, dobri stan švetih Božih crkov iz jednanja vši, Gospode, vi pomolim še. Za švetih hram, cetih še zvirju, po božništu i strahom vodim vhodja do njo, Gospode, vi pomolim še. Za švetih še v Slovensko, hivaja našo Franceska Papa Rimško, Gospode, vi pomolim še. Za Bože Nišo, vehodnog arhijepeskopa i patrijarha našo, ki šveto slava, za prešešće Nišo, arhijepeskopa i metropolita našo, ki leventja, za Boga dobrovog arhijepeskopa našo, ki Andrija, česne prezvitelstvo, Hristi diakonstvo, za veš pričetel, dej gospode, vi pomolim še. Za Bohom bevrženi narod naš, za pravljenja i vseviško, Gospode, vi pomolim še. Za misto, co je za kožne svoje, kožde misto, krajino i za teh, što viruju od životnih, Gospode, vi pomolim še. Za dobre politja, za vožaj podi v zemlji i čase mirni, Gospode, vi pomolim še. Za teh, što plavaju, podoložaju, za neduži straždajuštih povodnevnih i za spasinja i gospode, vi pomolim še. Štob ve zloviti še nam vidiš, ako i skorbih njivu i nožde, gospode, vi pomolim še. Zastupi, spasaj, pomiluj, hodi nas, Bože, Tvoje je v blahodatijo. Prešvjetu, prečisto, prebogosloveno, slovno, vodičiću našu bohorodiću i presno divu Mariju, zvuši mi še tem pomjeno, vše sam i sebe den odnoho i vse žiče naše Hristu Bohovi vidajmo. Svjaka slava češi poklonjenja, Otcu i Senu i Svetomu Duhovi, Nini pošak čas i na vike vični.
Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help and save, have mercy, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Remember your most holy and immaculate, most blessed and glorious lady, the mother of God, and ever virgin Mary, together with all the saints. Let us command ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Good and loving God, and may you glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Слава Вослаемо, 
Oțiu și Senu și Sfântul Duhovi, Nini poșac cea, și na vike vicni. be attentive. Peace be with all. Wisdom, let us be attentive. Wisdom. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Let us be attentive. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Peace be with you, wisdom. Let us be attentive.
Wisdom, stand aright. Let us listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us be attentive. The Lord said to his disciples, You know that in two days' time it will be Passover, and that the Son of Man is to be handed over to be crucified. At that time the chief priests and elders of the people were assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas. They plotted to arrest Jesus by some trick and kill him, but they said, Not during the festival, for fear of a riot among the people. At that time, Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper. A woman carrying a jar of costly perfume came up to him at table and began to pour it on his head. When the disciples saw this, they grew indignant, protesting, what is the point of such extravagance? This could have been sold for a good price and the money given to the poor. Jesus became aware of this and said to them, Why do you criticize the woman? It is a good deed she has done for me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. By pouring this perfume on my body, she has contributed toward my burial preparation. I assure you, wherever the good news is proclaimed throughout the world, what she did will be spoken of as her memorial. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went off to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he kept looking for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came up to Jesus and said, Where do you wish us to prepare the Passover supper for you? He said, Go to this man in the city and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. I am to celebrate the Passover with my disciples in your house. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover supper. When it grew dark, he reclined at table with the twelve. Jesus, fully aware that he had come from God and was going to God the Father, who had handed him everything over to him, rose from the meal and took off his cloak. He picked up a towel and tied it around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and dry them with the towel he had around him. Thus he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You may not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter replied, You shall never wash my feet. If I do not wash you, Jesus answered, You will have no share in my heritage. Lord, Simon Peter said to him, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus told him, The man who has bathed has no need to wash except for his feet. He is entirely cleansed, just as you are, though not all. After he had washed their feet, he put his cloak back on and reclined at table once more. He said to them, Do you understand what I just did for you? You address me as teacher and Lord, and fittingly enough, for that is what I am. But if I washed your feet, I who am teacher and Lord, that you must wash each other's feet. What I just did was to give you an example, as I have done, so you must do. I solemnly assure you, no slave is greater than his master, no messenger outranks the one who sent him. In the course of the meal, Jesus said, 
I assure you, one of you is about to betray me. Distressed at this, they began to say to one another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will hand me over. The Son of Man is departing, as Scripture says of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for him if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, spoke, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, It is you who have said it. During the meal, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. Take this and eat it, he said. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. All of you must drink from it, he said, for this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, to be poured out in behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink this fruit of the vine from now until the days when I drink it new with you in my Father's reign. Then, after singing songs of praise, they walked out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus then said to them, Tonight your faith in me will be shaken, for Scripture has it, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I am raised up, I will go to Galilee ahead of you. Peter responded, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be shaken. Jesus said to him, I give you my word, before the cock crows tonight, you will deny me three times. Peter replied, Even though I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. He said to his disciples, Stay here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and Zebedee's two sons and began to experience sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My heart is nearly broken with sorrow. Remain here and stay awake with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. Still, let it be as you would have it, not as I. And an angel appeared to him from heaven to strengthen him. In his anguish, Jesus prayed with all the greater intensity, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. Then he rose from pr prayer. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not stay awake with me even an hour? Be on guard and pray that you may not undergo the test. The Spirit is willing, but nature is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he began to pray, My Father, if this cannot pass me by without my drinking it, your will be done. Once more, on his return, Jesus found them asleep. They could not keep their eyes open. He left them again, withdrew somewhat, and began to pray a third time, saying the same words as before. Finally, he returned to his disciples and said to them, Sleep on now. Enjoy your rest. The hour is on us when the Son of Man is to be handed over to the power of evil men. Get up. Let us be on our way. See, my betrayer is here. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a great crowd with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priests and elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged to give them a signal, saying, The man I shall embrace is the one. Take hold of him. He immediately went over to Jesus and said to him, Peace, Rabbi, and embraced him. Jesus answered, Friend, do what you are here for. At that moment, they stepped forward to lay hands on Jesus and arrested him. 
Suddenly one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and slashed at the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Jesus said to him, Put back your sword where it belongs. Those who use the sword are sooner or later destroyed by it. Do you not suppose I can call on my Father to provide, at a moment's notice, more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scripture be fulfilled, which says it must happen this way? At that very time, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I a brigand, that you have come armed with swords and clubs to arrest me? From day to day I sat teaching in the temple precincts, yet you never arrested me. Nonetheless, all this has happened in fulfillment of the writings of the prophets. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had apprehended Jesus led him off to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders were convened. Peter kept following him at a distance as far as the high priest's residence. Going inside, he sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests of the whole Sanhedrin were busy trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. They discovered none, despite the many false witnesses who took the stand. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man has declared, I can destroy God's sanctuary and rebuild it in three days. The high priest rose to his feet and addressed him, Have you no answer to the testimony leveled against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest then said to him, I order you to tell us, under oath, before the living God, whether you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus answered, It is you who say it, but I tell you this, Soon you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. At this the high priest tore his robes. He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? Remember, you heard the blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. At that time the soldiers began to spit in his face and hit him. Others slapped him, saying, Play the prophet for us, Messiah, who struck you? Peter was sitting in the courtyard when one of the serving girls came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. Peter denied it in front of everyone. I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those nearby, this man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, Peter denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. A little while later, some bystanders came over to Peter and said, You are certainly one of them, even your accent gives you away. At that, he began cursing and swore, I do not even know the man. Just then a cock began to crow, and Peter remembered the prediction Jesus had made. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. At daybreak, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took formal action against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him and led him away to be handed over to the procurator Pilate. Let us all say, with our whole soul and our whole mind, let us say, Have mercy. Almighty 
Indeed, Lord our God, all our fathers, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, in the greatness of your compassion. We pray you hear us and have mercy. So pray for most holy universal pontiff Francis Pope of Rome, for our beatitude most blessed major archbishop and patriarch Hugh Shetoslaw, and for our most reverend archbishop and metropolitan King Lawrence, and for our God loving bishop Kieran Dree, for <coughs> those who have served in this holy church, and also for the spiritual fathers, for our brethren in Christ. We also pray for our nation under God, for our government, and for the military. We also pray for increasing vocations to the holy priesthood, diacon of monastic life from among our youth, so that these consecrated people may participate in the work of salvation with us praying of God's kingdom and inspiring people to greater holiness. We pray, O Lord, hear us and have mercy. We also pray for the people of Ukraine who continue to suffer from cruel and unjust war, for those engaged in a, a, a love of battle and those forced to flee from their homes and families, and for those who are concerned for their relatives and friends. Lord, hear us and have mercy. So pray for the people you present who await your great and bountiful mercies for those who have been kind to us and for all Orthodox Christians. Again in peace, let the faithful pray to the Lord. You, O Lord, have shown us this great mystery of salvation. You have granted us your humble and unworthy servants to be ministers of your holy altar. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, make us capable in this ministry so that standing without condemnation before your holy glory, we may offer you a sacrifice of praise, for it is you alone who work all things and all. Grant, O Lord, that our sacrifice offered for our sins and the thoughtless transgressions of your people may be acceptable to you. O God, in your kindness and mercy, you have visited our lowliness. You have appointed us, your humble, sinful, and unworthy servants, to minister at your holy altar in the presence of your holy glory. Strengthen us in this ministry through the power of your Holy Spirit, and give us the eloquence to invoke the grace of your Holy Spirit upon the gifts which are about to be brought forth. Wisdom. So that always protected by your might, we may give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever.
Sviati šo slaňsko archrena šo Francisco Paporimsko ho Blaženi šo patriarcha naši ke Svetoslava Bohulivi ke pismo naši ke Andreja i vešo šanje diakonske monaši čen Bohom brežni narod naš pravljenje v Seviško Blahorodni ke pošek čas hodoban k fundatoriju i dobročinci su toho kramačio ho i vsih bavos pravoslavni hristijan Nechaj pomine hospod Bohu carci svojim, zaošeni ni pošak čas i na vike vični. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. For the precious gaze to be presented, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy church and for all who entered with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. That we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, and misfortune, let us pray to the Lord. You created us and brought us into this life. You have shown us the way to salvation and have given us the revelation of the holy mysteries. You yourself have appointed us to the service by the power of your Holy Spirit. Therefore, O Lord, be pleased to make us ministers of your new covenant and servants of your holy mysteries. According to your abundant mercy, receive us who have approached your holy altar so that we may be worthy to offer you the spiritual and bloodless sacrifice for our sins and for the thoughtless transgressions of your people. 
having received the sacrifice as aroma of agreeable fragrance upon your holy, heavenly, and mystical altar, send down upon us in return the grace of your Holy Spirit. Look upon us, O God, and consider this our ministry, and accept it as you once accepted the gifts of Abel, the sacrifices of Noah, the first fruit offerings of Abraham, the priesthood of Moses and Aaron, and the peace offerings of Samuel. Just as you accepted this true ministry from the hands of your apostles, now, O Lord, in your goodness, accept these gifts from the hands of us sinners, having thus been deemed worthy to minister at your holy altar without blame, we may obtain the reward of faithful and wise stewards on the awesome day of your just retribution. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your most holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and forever and ever. Peace be with all. Let us love one another so we may be of one mind in confessing. The doors, the doors in wisdom, let us be attentive. Then well, let us then with fear, let us be attentive to offer in peace the holy oblation. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the God the Father, almighty and adorable, it is truly proper and just, befitting the magnificence of your holiness, to praise you, to sing to you, to bless you, to worship you, to thank you, to glorify you, the only true God, and with a repentant heart and humble spirit, to offer you this our spiritual sacrifice, for you have granted us the revelation of your truth. Who is able to proclaim your might or make known all your praises, or to speak of all your wonders done in every age. O Master of all, Lord of heaven and earth and of all creation, both visible and invisible, you are enthroned in glory and yet behold the depths. You are eternal, invisible, beyond our understanding, boundless and immutable. O Father of our great God, Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, who is our hope, the image of your goodness, the seal bearing your likeness, you are revealed, O Father, through him. 
He is the living word, true God, eternal wisdom, life, sanctification, power, and the true light through whom the Holy Spirit manifested himself. He is the spirit of truth, the gift of filial adoption, the pledge of our future inheritance, the beginning of eternal goodness, the life-giving power, the fountain of sanctification, through whom every rational and intelligent creature is empowered to serve you and to render to you an unending hymn of praise, because all things are subject to you. You are praised by the angels, archangels, thrones, dominations, principalities, power, and the many I cherubim. You are attended by the seraphim, each with six wings. Two wings cover their face, two their feet, and with two they fly, and they call one to the other with unceasing and incessant hymns of praise. Singing, crying, exclaiming, and sang the triumphal hymn. With these blessed powers, O Master and Lover of Mankind, we sinners also cry out and say, Holy are you, truly most holy. Immeasurable is the majesty of your holiness. You were revered in all your deeds, for with truth and just judgment you have brought all things to pass for us. Taking dust from the earth, O God, you formed man and honored him with your own image. You placed him in a garden of delight and promised him the never-ending enjoyment of blessings and also immortality for the observance of your commandments. But man disobeyed you, the true God, who created him. He was led astray by the cunning of the serpent, and by his own transgressions was subjected to death. By your just judgment, O God, you expelled him from paradise into this world, and returned him to the earth from which he had been taken, and devised for him the salvation of regeneration which is in your Christ. And yet, O oh gracious Lord, you did not turn away from your creation, nor did you forget the work of your hands. You visited man in various ways because of your merciful loving kindness. You sent prophets and wrought mighty works through the saints, who in every generation have been pleasing to you. You spoke to us through your servants, the prophets, who foretold the salvation which was to come. You gave the law as an aid and appointed angels as our guardians. When the fullness of time had come, you spoke to us through your Son himself, through whom you created the temporal world. He, being the reflection of your glory and the express image of your person, and sustaining all things by his powerful word, did not deem equality with you, God and Father, something to be tenaciously held. And although remaining everlasting God, he appeared on earth and lived among men. He became incarnate from the Holy Virgin and emptied himself taking the form of a slave and becoming conformed to the state of our lowliness, so he might raise us to the image of his glory. For since by a man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, so your only begotten Son, though being in your bosom, God and Father, graciously willed to be born of a woman, the Holy Mother of God and ever-Virgin Mary. He was subject to the law in order to condemn sin in his flesh, so that those who died in Adam might in him, your Christ, be made to live again. Living in this world, he gave us precepts for salvation, and turning us away from the deceit of idolatry, he brought us to the knowledge of you, true God and Father. He took us to himself as a chosen people, a royal priesthood and a holy nation. Having cleansed us with water and having sanctified us with the Holy Spirit, he surrendered himself as a ransom to death by which we were held captive, having been sold into bondage under sin, descending by the cross into the realm of death, that he might fulfill all things through himself, he loosed the bonds of death, because it was impossible that the author of life should be the victim of corruption. He arose on the third day, preparing the way for the resurrection of all flesh from the dead. 
He thus became the first fruits of the harvest of the departed, the firstborn of the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence over all. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of your majesty on high and shall come to reward each man according to his deeds. He left us these memorials of his solitary passion, these which we have set forth according to his command. For when he was about to go to his voluntary and ever memorable and life-giving death, on the night and when he surrendered himself for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and most pure hands, and offering it to you, God and Father, he gave thanks, blessed it, sanctified it, and broke it. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Likewise, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine, and when he had mixed it and had given thanks, he blessed it and sanctified it. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim my death and profess my resurrection. Therefore, O Master, remembering his saving passion, his life-giving cross, the three days he spent in the tomb, together with his resurrection from the dead and his ascension into heaven, as well as his being enthroned at your right hand, God and Father, and finally his second glorious and awesome visit is yet to me. We offer to you, yours of your own, in behalf of all and for all. We sing of you, we bless you, we thank you, O Lord, and we pray to you, our God. For this reason, all holy since you have enabled us sinners and unworthy servants to minister at your holy altar, not because of our righteousness, for we have done nothing good upon this earth, but because of your mercies and compassion which you have so richly poured out upon us, we have the courage to approach your holy altar, and while offering to you the symbol of the holy body and blood of your Christ, we call upon you and beseech you, O Holy of Holies, that according to the good pleasure of your kindness, your Holy Spirit may come upon us and upon the gifts offered to you, and bless, and sanctify them, and show this bread to be the precious body of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ, and this chalice to be the precious blood of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ, poured forth for the life of the world so that all of us become partakers of the one bread and chalice, may be united with one another in the communion of the Holy Spirit, and that none of us partake of the holy body and blood of your Christ for judgment or condemnation. Rather, may we obtain mercy and grace together with all the saints, who through the ages have been well-pleasing to you, with the forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and with every right just spirit made perfect in the flesh. May we obtain mercy and grace, especially with our most holy, most pure and blessed and glorious Lady, the Mother of God and ever-Virgin Mary. Remember also those who departed in the hope of rising to eternal life. 
We pray for the forgiveness to impose on your servants in the place of light from which grief and mourning have been driven away. Grant them rest, O God, and let them repose where the light of your countenance shines forth. We also pray to you, remember, Lord, your holy Catholic and apostolic church, which extends from one end of the earth to the other. Give peace to her whom you have redeemed with the precious blood of your Christ. Make firm this holy church until the end of time. Remember, O Lord, those who have offered these gifts to you and for those for whom and through whom and the purpose for which they were offered. Remember, O Lord, the donors and benefactors of your holy churches and grant those who remember the poor. Reward them with your rich and heavenly blessings. Bestow upon them your heavenly gifts instead of earthly gifts, eternal instead of temporal gifts, incorruptible instead of perishable gifts. Remember, Lord, those who are in deserts and mountains and in the dens and caves of the earth. Remember, Lord, those who live in virginity and piety and those who practice asceticism and its safety lives. Remember, Lord, our civil authorities and give them profound and enduring peace. Instill into their hearts good things for your church and for all your people, that in their tranquility we may lead a calm and quiet life in all piety and integrity. Remember, Lord, every principality and authority and all our brethren in the service of our country. Preserve their virtues and goodness, and by your goodness make those who are evil good. Remember, O Lord, the people here present and those who are absent for honorable reasons, and have mercy on them and on us according to the greatness of your mercy. Fill their homes with every good thing, preserve their marriages in peace and harmony, instruct the children, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint-hearted, collect the scattered and lead back those who have strayed and unite them to your holy Catholic and apostolic church. Free those who are bothered by unclean spirits, sail with those at sea, journey with travelers, defend widows, protect orphans, free those in captivity and heal the sick. Remember, O God, those who are on trial, in prisons, and at hard labor, as well as those who have any affliction, need, or distress. Remember, Lord, those who are in need of your great tenderness of heart, and those who love us, and those who hate us, and those who have asked us, and worthy though we be, to pray for them. Remember, O Lord, our God, all your people, and upon all of them pour forth your rich mercy, granting those petitions which are for their salvation. You yourself remember those who have not, we have not remembered through ignorance or forgetfulness or multitude of names, because, O oh God, you know the name and age of all. You know each one even from his mother's womb. For you, O oh Lord, are a help to the helpless, the hope to the hopeless, the savior of those in peril from storms at sea, the harbor for voyagers, the physician for the sick. Be all things to all men, for you know each one and his requests, each home and its needs, Deliver, O Lord, this city and every city and countryside from plague, flood, fire, sword, for an invasion and from civil war and riot. Remember, Lord, the servants of God and grant them salvation, visitation, and the forgiveness of their sins. Among the first, remember, O Lord, our most holy universal pontiff, Francis Pope of Rome, his beatitude of Patriarch Stratislaw, our God of Bishop Andre, for the sake of your holy churches, Grant that they may live in peace, safety, honor, and health for many years, and rightly impart the word of your truth. Remember, O Lord, all right believing bishops who faithfully dispense the word of your truth. Remember also my unworthiness, O Lord, according to the multitude of your mercies. Forgive my every transgression committed deliberately or through human frailty, and because of my sins, do not withhold any grace of your Holy Spirit from these gifts here present. Remember, Lord, the priesthood of the diaconate in Christ in every clerical order, and let none of us who surround your holy altar be put to shame. Visit us with your grace, O Lord. Reveal yourself to us through your rich compassion. Grant us a healthful and agreeable climate and gentle showers upon the earth, that it may be fruitful, and in your goodness bless the due cycle of the seasons. By the power of your Holy Spirit, prevent schism in the church, restrain the raging of nations, and quickly destroy the upsurges of heresy. Receive us all into your kingdom, making us children of light and children of the day. Grant us your peace and love, O Lord our God, for you have given all things to us. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and sing the praises of your most honored and magnificent name. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. And may the mercies of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And with your spirit. I will now have the blessing of the Holy Chrism. O Lord of mercy and Father of lights, for whom every good gift and every perfect gift is given, grant us who are unworthy your grace to perform this great and life-creating mystery as you gave it to Moses, your faithful servant, and to your servant Samuel, and to your holy apostles, and send down your all Holy Spirit upon this chrism. Make it a spiritual anointing for the preservation of life and the sanctification of souls and bodies, the oil of rejoicing which was in former times under the old law and now has shone in the new covenant, whereby the anointed the kings, high priests, and prophets, and all who were from them and all who were followed after them to this present day. Yes, O Lord God Almighty, make this chrism through the descent of your holy and worshipful, worshipful spirit to be a garment of incorruption, a seal which makes and depicts your divine name, and that of your only begotten Son and of the Holy Spirit upon those who receive holy baptism, that they may be known by the holy angels, archangels, and by all the choirs of heaven, and as brothers and sisters, members of your household, citizens of your holy city, your own servants, sanctified in soul and body, foreign to all evil and cleansed of all sin, recognized by this holy seal as by the robe of your all-pure glory, and may be fearsome in battle to all the wicked and unclean demons, that they may be a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, sealed with this your immaculate mystery, and may bear Christ in their hearts, to be a habitation for you, God the Father, in the Holy Spirit. For you, for holy are you, our God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with all. And with Love your you. spirit. Bye. Heads to the Lord. O Spiritari of Soho, to be Holo Predoseche, Senaimu Shei Sercha Nashaho, but is for Dovenas put to the stone of Miss Rushe Telmiam at Siebushas and to eat Taine, Rada Choho Visra Momilisadia Toye, Shayote, Podasot comes Leo Nanas. I prosimo še vno osvjačenje prinjale, i jak maske oli, zleti na holovo stisnjoval osvjačenja, oli bo maske zleti na holovo je nazvanjem jeden rodno sene tvojo, Hrsta Boha našaho, je komu to ve svit vedemi in ne vedemi, napognjajuc se zapakom, po tebi poklonjajuče tebe, proslovjajuče vsjude, i da bi slavu i čez vosolajemo, Ocu i Senu i Svetomu Duhovi, neni pošak čas i na vike vični. May this mixture of oils be, by, by, be purification and spiritual protection for all who are anointed with it, now and forever and ever. Amen. Nechaj budet se zmišljenje o lidja vsih nem pomazanek očišćenja i koristnoju o koronoju da duši na vike vični. Amin. May this mixture of holy oils be purification and spiritual protection for all who are anointed with it now and forever and ever. Amen. Continue. Yeah.
having remembered all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts which we presented and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. That our loving God would receive them as a spiritual phrase from his holy heaven and mystical altar, may send down on us return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. That we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, and misfortune. Let us pray to the Lord. And accept in these gifts, O oh God, purify us from every stain of body and soul. Teach us how to perfect our holiness through reverence for you, so that receiving a portion of your hallowed gifts without any reproach from our conscience, we may be united to the holy body and blood of your Christ. Having received them worthily, may we have Christ living in our hearts, and may we become the temple of your Holy Spirit. Especially, O oh God, that none of us become guilty regarding these awesome and heavenly mysteries of yours, nor let, nor let us become weakened in spirit or body by partaking of them unworthily. O Lord, grant that we, even until our last breath, may worthily receive a portion of your holy gifts as a provision for the journey to eternal life and for an acceptable defense before the dread tribunal of your Christ. Then, together with the saints who have been pleasing to you at all times, may we become partakers of your eternal blessings, which you have prepared for those Zastupis, pasi pomiluj hodin nas Bože Tvoje i oblahodatiju. Dnja všeho doskonalo, šetalo, mernalo i bezrično u Hospoda prošim. Anjela miru, vjenova nastavnika, ohoronča, dužit ću naših u Hospoda prošim. Prošenja, vidpuštenja, rihi, prorišenja našeg u Hospoda prošim. Dobro i požitočno da duž našeg i meru dla švitu u Hospoda prošim. Ostavi čas žiće našeg u meri pokajanji skinčete u Hospoda prošim. Hristijanskoj končinića našeg bez bolizne i bez dohane i mirne i dobog otvitu na strašnom osudi Hristovom uproši. Jedni žvire i pričašće žetova duha vyprosivši za mi sebe jedno odnoho i vse žiće naše Hristu Bohovi vidajmo. Vladeko zi smile višću, ne osudim smite prezavate tebe, nebesno Boha Otca i movete. Царство и сила и слава Отца и Сына и Святого Духа, ныне по вся час и на веки вечни. Мир всех! Оливы ваши перед Господом схили. Благодать, чище, дорогие, мы, человеку, любим, для народного сына Твого, за кем Ты благословен, 
Messias, 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 O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Let us be attentive. The holy things for the holy. Strachom Božím by ľubovil prestúpiť a poučiť a fear of God with love and with faith.
Save your people, O God, and bless your inheritance. Blessed is our God at all times, now and forever and ever. Stand the right, having received the divine, holy, immaculate, immortal, heavenly, life-giving, awesome mysteries of Christ. Let us rightly give thanks to the Lord. Help and save, have mercy, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Having asked that this whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, sinless, let us command ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are our sanctification, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Let us, go forth. Let us go forth in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. You bless those who bless you, Lord, and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the fullness of your church, sanctify those who love the beauty of your house, and glorify them by your divine power. Do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the priest, to our nation, under God, to our government, and to all your people, for all good given. And every perfect gift from above, coming down from you, the Father of lights, and we give glory, thanks, and worship to you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. mystery of your plan, O Christ our God, has been completed and perfected as far as it was in our power. We have commemorated your death. We have seen the figure of your resurrection. We have been filled with your unending life. We have enjoyed your inexhaustible delights. Grant that we be made worthy of all of this in the world to come through the grace of your eternal Father, of your all holy gracious and life-giving spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the clergy to take their places at the chairs, and we will then be having the service of the washing of the feet in these small purple booklets that were handed out earlier.
Have mercy on me, O God, in your kindness, in your compassion, walk out my offense. Wash me, Lord, more from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. My offenses totally, I know them, my sin is always before me. Against you alone have I sinned, I sleep on your side, I that you that you may be justified when you kill sentence and be without reproach when you charge. Indeed, you love truth in the heart, and in it the secret of my heart, teach me wisdom. Rejoicing and gladness that the bones that yet you have crushed may thrill. All my sins turn away your face and blot out all my guilt. Have your heart great for me, O God, put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. And the joy of your help with a spirit of fervor sustain me. Oh, rescue me, God, my helper, and my tongue shall ring out your goodness. Oh, Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall be your When sacrifice you take no delight, burn offering from me. Your word refuse. My sacrifice, a contrite spirit, a humbled contrite heart, you will not spend. In your goodness, show favor to Zion, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And you will be pleased with lawful sacrifice, and offerings really consumed. Then you will be offered young bulls on your altar. The apostles, bound with the bond of love, offer themselves to Christ, the Master of all, that he wash their beautiful feet, announcing the good tidings of peace to all. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. who girded himself with a towel and washed the feet of your disciples. Wash away the defilement of our souls and gird us about with the bond of the Spirit that we may observe your commandments and glorifying sing of your goodness. Desiring to receive the benefits of your faithful, with reverence let us hasten to your washing, not washing away bodily defilement, but mystically sanctified. Our souls, for Christ our Savior, who looks upon the earth, makes it tremble as you sat down and touch his feet of clay, making us strong as salt.
against all the host of the adversary. To him, let us cry out in thanksgiving. O oh, good one, we are shown humility. To be the particular way of exaltation for our sins.
In peace let us pray to the Lord. For peace from one high for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For peace in the whole world, for the way being of God's holy churches, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy church and for all who enter it with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our most blessed major Archbishop and Peter Kishveto Slau, and for our most reverend Archbishop Metropolitan and King Lawrence, and for our God loving Bishop Kieran Dree, for the whole reverend priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, and all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. For our nation under God, for our government, for the military, let us pray to the Lord. For this city and for every city in the country and for the faithful who lived in them, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for the abundance of the fruits of the earth and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For the seafarers and travelers, for the sick and suffering, for those who are captive and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. That this washing may be blessed and sanctified by the power, actions, and descent of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. That it may serve for the washing away of the defilements of our offenses, let us pray to the Lord. That we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, and misfortune, let us pray to the Lord. Help and save, have mercy, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Remembering our most holy and immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Mother of God and ever Virgin Mary, together with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are the cleansing of our souls, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and God, who are unapproachable in your divinity, who in disguise a servant took the form of a servant, and as a model of so perfect humility, did with your all pure hands wash the feet of your disciples and dry them with a towel. Look down now upon us, your unworthy servants, who are imitating the great glory of your condescension, as far as we are able and grant that with the touch of this water we may be washed clean of the defilements of the flesh and impurity of soul. Grant us the invisible visitation of all the O Holy Spirit, and make our souls and bodies firm against the deceiving serpent who bruises our heel, that having been made clean, we may serve you with a well -please, in a well-pleasing manner, treading upon serpents and scorpions and all the hosts of the enemy. For glory on and worship is due to you and your Father without beginning and your O Holy God and like creating Spirit, now and forever and ever. Be with us all. Bow your heads to the Lord. O Lord, our God, who has shown us the full measure of humility, 
in your most exalted condescension, and calling the one who would be lost the first, you taught us to serve one another. Raise us up by your divine humility. Preserve us undefiled, who are ever washed with tears, cleansed by the light of your purifying grace, that ever falling down before you in truth, we may find mercy and compassion at your dread and judgment seat. For you are the merciful God who loves all of us, and we give glory to you, with your Father without beginning, and your most holy, good and like creating spirit, now and forever and ever. That we may be deemed worthy to listen to the Holy Gospel, let us beseech the Lord God. Wisdom, stand to right, let us listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. Let us be attentive. At that time before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that this hour has come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own, own in the world and he loved them to the end. The devil has already induced that Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during the supper, Fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a tower and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them. With a towel with which he has girded and 
and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel with which he was girded. And began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel which he was girded. And began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel with which he was girded. And began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel which he was girded. And began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel which he was girded. And began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel which he, which he was girded. And began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel which, which he was girded. And began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel which we was girded. And began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel which we was girded. And began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel which we was girded. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you, will, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will, not, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then only my feet but also my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has a base has no need except 
God to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over, so you are clean, but not all. For he knew he would betray him, for this reason he said, not all of you are clean. That we may be deemed worthy to listen to the Holy Gospel, let us beseech the Lord God. So when he had finished, or uh, here when he had washed their feet, and put his garments back on, and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me a teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I is therefore the master and teacher, how washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, our God, who in the greatest of your mercy emptied yourself and assumed the form of a servant, whose good pleasure it was, at the time of your salvific while creating and voluntary passion, to dine with your holy disciples and apostles, and who afterward girded himself with a towel and washed the feet of your holy disciples, giving them an example of humble-mindedness and love for one another, and who said, As I have done it to you, so do to one another. Do your master who came into the midst of your unworthy servants, who follow your example, wash away all the defilement and impurity of our souls, that having washed away the dust which has clung to us through our offenses, 
and wipe one another with a towel of love, that we may be well pleasing to you all the days of our life, and may find grace in your sight. For you are he who blesses and sanctifies all things, O Christ our God, and we give glory to you, with your Father without beginning, and your most holy, good and like creating spirit, now and forever and ever. would like to place their chairs back along the wall. We will conclude in a moment with the final blessing and dismissal. The blessing of the Lord be upon you with his grace and love for mankind, always, now, forever and ever. Glory be to you, Christ, our God, our hope. Glory be to you. The fathers can come forward. Come forward. Christ, our true God who in his exceeding great goodness has in the washing of the disciples' feet shown the higher path of humility and who condescended even to the cross and the tomb through the prayers of his Immaculate Mother, of our Father among the saints, Basil the Great, Archbishop of Caesarean Cappadocia, of blessed Nikita Budka, Bishop and Martyr, and of all the saints, will have mercy and save us for he is good and loves mankind. Thank you to everyone for your participation today. I invite the sisters to lead us in a closing hymn. Page 162, Rasna One, six, two. <laughs>